What's going on guys? This is Bruce Matson, your host of the show, Metric Scout Fantasy Football. And in this episode, we're going to be covering Trey Sermon's Pro Day numbers, what that means, and how could he be as a prospect for us in Dynasty Fantasy Football. So officially at the Pro Day, he measured at 6 foot, 215 pounds, not bad for size. And his 40-yard dash time came in at 4.6 and 4.57. So probably like a, a low to mid 4.6 guy on his speed. So he's a slower running back. We know that from tape. He's not a burner. He doesn't have the speed. He's not going to accelerate run past the defense. However, he had some good numbers here. He had a 10-5 broad jump and a 37-inch vertical jump, which means he can accelerate quickly. He's got some burst, which is cool. Could help him get through the second level of the defense. And then his three code measured in really nice at 6.83, which is something we kind of would think when you look at him on the surface from his film. He moves laterally very well, has very smooth feet. He's a very smooth operator in general, and that aids to his three count, but his burst as well. He has been productive at times throughout his career. He technically broke out for two different collegiate programs. Rushed for 870 yards this year for Ohio State. Came in big for them down the stretch for four touchdowns. And then during his sophomore season for Oklahoma, he rushed for 947 yards and 13 touchdowns. If you don't remember during that time span, he was considered a big-time Devy prospect. He's getting drafted high in drafts. Injuries got in the way. Kenny Brooks siphoning touches got in the way. And then him eventually transferring to OSU, having the shared touches with Master Teague until eventually Sermon got the opportunity to be able to work, take over a large workload. Um, when it comes to looking at his long-term dynasty fantasy football value, the one thing that comes up for me from a metric standpoint is his age. He's 22 years old right now. Come next January, he'll be 23. You want to look past that rookie year. Um, he's an older prospect. The older running backs, older prospects are less likely to hit. However, there's some good things in his profile here athletically. The the burst from his broad jump and his vertical and then his three cone is good. I wish he had better long speed. That size adjusted speed is something I really love in running backs. But considering his price tag in Dynasty it was going to be a third round rookie pick, what you could potentially get from him if he hits... And that's good. We have seen slower running backs perform before. And the age doesn't bother me too much, considering he's a cheaper player. There's other running backs I like. But if he goes in the right spot where I see or where we can see he can get a pathway to touches early in his career where it's not a, a bottlenecked depth chart, then he may be a guy we want to take a couple swings on because he has shown some flashes over his collegiate career, broke out sophomore season, 947 rushing yards, 13 touchdowns, and then broke out again for Ohio State. So he broke out with two different teams. So he's proven he can transition from one offense to the next, from his high school offense to Oklahoma, from Oklahoma to Ohio State. So he'll be able to transition from Ohio State to his NFL team and be able to produce or at least compete for touches in training camp or whatever. And his he does have the athleticism to make it worth their while. And he's bursty, and he moves laterally very well, which we see on tape. He has good vision. He runs over guys. He's just a very smooth running back. He just does not have the long speed, and he's not going to get you 60-yard runs. However, he, he's got the burst. He's got the wiggle to make some moves in the open field, which we've seen him do at times. We've seen him do it in Oklahoma. We've seen him do it at Ohio State. Very smooth player again and moves laterally well and can move very well in short spaces, sees the field good. That's the stuff I'm not worried about. So I really just need him to go to a good depth chart where I can see a pathway for him to gain touches, get an opportunity. I'm just not over the moon for him, but I'm not over the moon for anybody in this running back class. Of course, I like Damian Harris. I like Travis Etienne. I like, I like the top guys. But when you talk about the depth, it's not very exciting. Trey Sermon, he's more on notice for me. I've liked him 
this year for Ohio State, especially since I'm a Ohio State fan. I really wish he didn't get hurt against Alabama because I think that game could have been a proving grounds for him to elevate his draft capital in front of a national audience and the biggest game of his career and that could have elevated him big time if he could have posted 100 yards and a couple scores or something like that like he's been like he was doing prior it just didn't happen but for him for what we've seen on tape that, that's good pro day numbers it's just I don't like older players however if he gets drafted in the top 100 if he gets overdrafted and goes to a team where there's a chance for touches then you really got to look at that. Opportunity is everything for running backs. And if he gets in a spot where he can prove himself, get touches, then he could prove himself to be the RB1 for a team, which may not mean that he's going to be an RB1 in fantasy, but maybe a high-end RB2, mid-level RB2 in the right situation. Uh, it's hard to tell, but we're just prospecting here. But he's definitely a guy we do not want to fade. We just want to keep our eyes open Stay considerate and see what happens. I'm not over the moon with him at all, but I do recognize he had some decent pro day numbers. And I'm going to have my running back rankings up again on another video shortly. So another reason why you need to hit that subscribe button, hit that follow so you don't miss the next episode. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you next time.